On Monday, the U.S. and China held another high-level official meeting. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman met with China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Vice Foreign Minister She Feng in Tianjin, a city next to Beijing. Looking at the afterward statement, we can see that the meeting didn't seem to ease the tension between the two countries. The Chinese Vice Minister Xie told the media that the Chinese government had issued two lists of arrows that Americans need to address. Today, we'll focus on these two lists and how these lists reflect on the current US-China relation. Also, in recent years, there has been an obvious trend among Chinese diplomats to be more aggressive, aka wolf warrior diplomacy. And let's see what is the cause of this strange phenomena. Welcome to Beyond the News, I'm Fei. First, let's talk about what happened during the meeting. The meeting happened two days back. On the 26th of July, the US Deputy Secretary of State Sherman had a closed-door meeting with the Chinese Foreign Minister and the Vice Foreign Minister. After the meeting, the US State Department issued one of those typical, vague and diplomatic statements you normally expect from a government agency which didn't reveal anything interesting. Compared with the Chinese government, things are quite the opposite. The Chinese revealed a lot more things this time. According to the Chinese government mouthpiece Xinhua News Agency, the Vice Minister Xie was extremely aggressive during the meeting and was very critical about the recent US policy towards China. During the meeting, Xie accused the US government for interfering in China's internal affair demonizing China and making China that imaginary enemy. I think we can highlight his little speech in one line. The US did all the wrong things and still wants to take all the advantages. How is that possible? Remember, he was saying all this in front of Sherman, probably with a mean look in his face. From what Xie was saying, you can see that the purpose of the meeting was not really to communicate with each other. Rather, it was just the Chinese officials trying to humiliate the US diplomats. Furthermore, Xie also told the media that he has presented two lists to the US. They are the lists of arrows the US government has made in their policy towards China. And in the area the Chinese government deemed important to them, before we dive into the lists, I'd like to ask for your opinion. Are the Chinese diplomats this dumb? What they have done is tell the US that these policies are hurting our communist regime. Please stop. Otherwise, we would dot dot dot. Imagine you are the policymakers from the US government. If you receive this list, would you stop using these policies or will you expand them? Especially when the US-China relation is this tense. I think the answer is obvious. Now, let's have a look at the arrows US has made. In the order being listed, the arrows are number one, visa restriction on Chinese Communist Party members and their relatives. Two, US sanctions on high-ranking Chinese officials and the government agencies. Three, visa restrictions on Chinese students studying in the US. Four, suppressing Chinese companies, suppressing Confucius Institutes, and number six, designating Chinese media outlets as foreign mission, etc. You can see, for issues that have real impact on everyday Chinese, like the US limiting technology export to China or tariffs on Chinese exports, were not even listed. These policies would have a direct impact on employment and people's living standard in China. Instead, the government's priority is whether or not its CCP members and their relatives can go to America, etc. Let's put aside the fact China was trying to interfere with US visa policy, hence interfering with the US internal affairs. The list tells you who the government is really working for. It is not for the Chinese general public, but for the Chinese Communist Party's core members. You may be wondering, why would these be the priority items for the Chinese government? This is because most of the Chinese officials are very corrupt. In order to protect their wealth, many of them have transformed their assets to Western countries, and many of their children and grandchildren are already passport holders of the developed Western countries. 
In 2011, a statistic leaked out of the U.S. Immigration Department showed that for all current and retired Chinese government officials who are of minister level or above, nearly 75% of their children are either U.S. citizens or U.S. green card holders. As for their grandchildren, the percentage is even higher, 91%. I think now you can understand why Chinese officials are treating these issues as their priority, because these are directly related to their own personal interest. Let's look at the list from another perspective. Most of the policies on this list were first implemented during the Trump administration. Chinese diplomats are raising the issues now because they want the Biden administration to revoke these sanctions. Is it possible? Seems unlikely. Right now, China issues seems to be the only thing that has bipartisan support in the US political arena. Therefore, it is unlikely for Biden to go soft on China, even if he wants to. So, the tension between the two governments would likely persist or keep escalating. Where do you think the US-China relation is heading? Leave me a comment below. Now, let's talk about another interesting phenomena we witnessed during this meeting. As we mentioned earlier, Chinese diplomats were acting aggressively during the meeting in front of the US Deputy Secretary. Normally, during a diplomatic meeting, I would imagine even if the two sides are hating each other to the guts, they will still maintain a amicable thing for the public or just to keep a friendly relationship on the surface so that there are still opportunities for future negotiation. What the Chinese diplomats have done this time has pretty much killed such possibilities, making future negotiation between the two countries harder. But obviously, these Chinese diplomats are not stupid. Then why are they doing that? In my opinion, there are two reasons. The first is for his own propaganda needs, and the second is to please their big boss, Xi Jinping. Let's unpack the first reason, the propaganda. In recent years, people have been noticing a sign when Chinese officials speak to foreign media or foreign governments. They are not actually speaking to them. Instead, they are using the opportunity to speak to the Chinese people inside China. When they are talking tough against foreign press or foreign government, these clips are used by the CCP mouthpiece as a way to show how powerful China is, fooling people to think that China is a strong country which dares to challenge the US. So many people, especially those Chinese who were brainwashed in a twisted way, clips like this can make them feel proud of their country, hence proud of the Chinese Communist Party. As in China, the concept about the country of China, the Chinese government, and the Chinese Communist Party have been mixed well to become just one thing. We will explain further in our future episode. So if you want to know more about how Chinese Communist Party brainwashing its people, then it is the time to hit the subscribe button. Let's have a look at an example. Earlier this year, China and the US had a high-level official meeting in Alaska. The Chinese side was led by the top diplomat Yang Jiechi. In Yang's opening statement, he spoke for 16 minutes in Chinese to criticize the US government. That was so disrespectful. And it goes against the normal diplomatic conduct. Imagine you are on the US side and you have no idea what your counterpart was saying for 16 minutes. How would you feel? At the end of Yang's speech, the interpreter asked, Shall I first translate? And Yang seemed puzzled and replied, Do you need to? That shows Yang's intended audience was not the US diplomats sitting opposite, but the people inside China. Besides its propaganda purpose for the Chinese people, there is another equally important purpose for such aggressive speeches. It is also for the Chinese CCP boss, Xi Jinping. Why do they want Xi to hear this? Before we answer the question, let's think about what kind of mindset she's in now. Since Xi became the president in 2013, everything he did was to consolidate his power and win the upper hand in the party power struggle. Whether it was his anti-corruption campaign or to make himself the president for life, all he tries to do is to be the ultimate person in charge because it is the only way he can guarantee his own safety. 
In case you don't know, Communist Party leader is a high-risk job. If you look back in history, not many of them had a happy ending. Thus, in order to make people think he's in control, she needs to have a top person persona and crush anyone who will or can challenge his authority. Therefore, when diplomats are being aggressive to the world, it is their way of showing the leader she's tough persona. Also, they are talking in the manner how she likes it to be. She has been very much like a wolf warrior lately, such as anyone trying to bully us will face bloodshed. Therefore, Chinese diplomats being aggressive is a way to attract Xi's attention and possibly get a big promotion on the horizon. Even though the Chinese diplomacy has become more aggressive, the US government is not really going softer either. How will this US-China standoff end? Only time will tell. Alright, that's all for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching Beyond the News. I'm Faye. I'll see you again very soon.